This is Stone Security again with another webisode. You've got Pat Milborn, Andy Schreier, and Adam Winterton on to talk through some milestone storage basics for you. Um, we'd like to give you a little bit of uh, help that many of our clients have asked uh, for a uh, minor uh, mini training on. And uh, that would be a little bit about storage um, and common errors with the storage drives and and then also workflow of recorded data. And we're going to let Adam take us through some of that detail. Um, Adam Winterton is one of our support engineers. Go ahead, Adam. All right. Welcome, everyone. Today we are going to start by looking at the storage of where we're, where we're actually keeping our video. And there's two things that are helpful to, to make our system a little more efficient. One of those things, the first setting we're going to look at is on our hard drive where we want to record our video to. We're going to right click on it. We're going to go to properties. And by default, Windows will turn this box on, allow files on this drive to have context indexed in addition to file properties. So by default, that's on. We want to turn it off. What this is doing is Windows is, as we're recording video to that drive, Windows is trying to determine what are you doing to my drive? What are you putting on it? Because it's going to try and index it so it can use it for search results and anything else that you might be, be using. It'll also make navigating that drive faster as far as just seeing the file structure and things. But it has a negative impact on milestones. So we, we want to turn that off. So when you turn that off, let me turn it on real quick and you'll see. So you'll get this pop-up box that says apply changes to the R drive or to the drive, subfolders, and files. And so we want to apply those changes. And if you have a lot of data on that drive, it'll take a little bit of time to go through and do that. Another thing you want to check is what format your drive is formatted in. Now, this one I've already checked, and it's the way that it should be. But what you might have to do is NTFS is the file system that we want to use. But by default, Windows, when it provisions or formats a drive, is going to come back as 4096. And we actually want that to be 64 kilobytes. Now, this is formatting a drive, and so if you have data on your drive right now and you go make this change, you're going to lose all the data on that drive. This would be something you'd want to check at the beginning when you're setting up a system initially, just to make sure that that says 64 kilobytes so that we get the best performance out of that drive. All right, so now that we've looked at those two things, let's go jump into Milestone Management Client. What we're looking at here is a small little site um, that is at my house, which is why there are not very many cameras and they are kind of dumb. But what we have is our recording server, VMMS 2019 R3. And on that recording server, I have two cameras. And right now I have one storage profile just called local default. And you can, if you want, make multiple storage profiles. We could have one that's called 30 days or we could have one that's called 60 days or so on. And we'll, we'll walk through some of those in just a moment. But if you wanted to change or specify which recording profile your camera is going to use, you'll go to that camera on the recording tab. You can change, here it is, storage, local default. And if we had additional, we could change and specify which one we wanted to use. That way you can, you know, say you've got cameras, do you wanna keep some for 60 days? Some are more important than others. Uh, you, you can control that very easily. Okay, so coming back here to the recording server, on my storage tab, let's just work with our local default. Right now, by default, Milestone will come up with just one level of recording. This level, as we can see, called local default, it's going to my R drive, uh, which I call it R just because that's my recording drive, and it's going to a Milestone folder. By default, it comes up as media database. I like to change it as milestone because then in my virus scanning, I can just say omit any folder called milestone. Uh, retention time, we have set to 30 days and we have specified the size of our drive, the maximum size that we want to use on this drive as one, uh, 1,000 gigabytes or one terabyte. Now, if we have a drive and 
that drive itself is not enough video, we can utilize a second drive. And that is called an archive drive. So if we add an archive, we're going to do archive one. I have a network folder, a network drive here. Um, actually, it's not there. Let's double check. It is, oh, it won't show up because it's actually a shared folder, not a shared drive. My apologies. But if you do have a shared network drive or a second hard drive on that server, you could specify a second location. Now, I'm going to do it on this same one on R, but that is another thing we're going to talk about. We actually don't want to do what I'm about to do. We're going to call this archive and hit OK, but this will give us a chance to talk to it. OK, we'll put it on C. And we're going to say, we'll say 60 days and 1,000 gigabytes. OK, so just to illustrate what this is doing, our video from the cameras is coming down into the R drive, and it's being stored and saved in the milestone folder. It will keep it there for 30 days. At 30 days, it is going to archive it to the next tier of storage. And that tier, that archive schedule is happening as we can see. So the way our video is coming into the system, it comes into our recording server, and then it's going to hit the recording profile, the storage configuration that we specified for that camera. And then it's going to come down and it's going to record first to our first stage of recording, which here we have it set as our milestone. And it's going to keep it here in this tier for 30 days to a maximum size of 1000 gigabytes. If either of these, whichever of these periods or, or thresholds gets crossed first, it will automatically start moving that out to the next tier. But we don't necessarily want to do that because we don't have control over when that is happening. So we want to specify values here that are going to allow us to remain in control of our video. Now, so I have an archive one set up that is going to an, an, another drive. In this demonstration, it is going to my C drive, which is my OS drive. That is not a recommended practice. That is only for the purposes of this demonstration. So what's going on is the video is going to come here. It will stay there for 30 days. At 30 days, when the archive is scheduled, any, any video that's 30 days or older is going to move from our first tier down to our second tier. And it will only stay here the remainder of the time which is an additional 30 days. One important thing to note is that these times are not cumulative. They run concurrently. So my total archive time is not 30 days plus 60 days. It's actually just simply purely 60 days. And it will spend 30 days here, and then it will spend 30 days here. So. What we can look at next is on this archive, basically if, if, if that first tier of recording of storage is not enough to give us the retention that we want, or maybe it's not fast enough to handle all the video that we're throwing at it, plus people viewing that video after it's been recorded, we might add in a second stage of recording. And this would typically be to a second set of disk. Um, maybe to a, a large volume of archive disk where we have a rate five of multiple terabytes of data. And then we're going to run that. And then archive it down to that. So. One thing we want to look at now is that archive schedule. So if I double click on this on the archive tier. Retention is 60 days again, that 60 days total before it gets deleted, not 60 days just in this tier. We're going to set a limit to it. And so if this volume was two terabytes, we might say 2000 gigabytes. We can reduce the frame rate if we wanted to allocate, basically reduce the size of our video, use more of that space for more video. And then we have a schedule. Right now, this schedule by default is going to run every night at midnight. So every night at midnight, our video is going to move 
any video older than 30 days is going to get transferred from recording down to archive one. One thing we recommend is if you have a lot of video that's accumulating in that first tier, you might actually want to change this to happen more frequently. So you might say every 12 hours starting at midnight, or you might say run it every six hours starting at midnight. And what that's going to do is every six hours, it's going to take video from recording and drop it down to archive one. And it's only taking video that's over 30 days. So 30 to 60 days is a pretty uncommon scenario. A more common situation might look like this. We have six hours and a thousand gig for all of our cameras to come into. And then on our second steer tier, we're going to keep that video for a total of 30 days. If you have video that's in there longer than 30 days, because we've shortened down that time retention, it is going to drop that off immediately. So just know that when we get this warning box, it's not going to wait for the archive schedule. It will happen immediately. So now this is a pretty typical situation. We have our video coming in. It's there for six hours. Any video that is here older than six hours is going to get archived at the next schedule. It will come down to our 30 days. It will stay here until the video itself is 30 days old, and then it will be deleted at the next archiving schedule. So every six hours, because that's what my archive schedule is set at, I will be deleting little bits of video, but also transferring little bits of video down to my archive. So hopefully that clears up some of the misconceptions about milestone storage profiles, um, as well as give some insight into how to set up your storage for more efficient use. Very, very nicely done. Thank you, Adam. And thanks to everyone for watching. We really appreciate your time today. Look for us again when we do another Stone webisode. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.